welcome. I was expecting you. Perfect. And we're ready to start yeah, the experiments. Whoa, you're missing something. Uh, oh, lab coat. Grab that. Is it shrunk in the wash? Whoa, you're still missing something. Uh, ooh, some snazzy safety glasses. There we go. All set. So these here, these are the certificates from the suppliers and these can tell you things such as the concentration, impurities and other factors. The most important ones that are for you guys is this one here is a sodium hydroxide pellets and it is 98.66% pure. Uh, so what we're doing here, we have a four uh, decimal place weighing scale and we take a, an empty boat and place it on the scale close the door and then we zero it so that when we add the sodium hydroxide to the weighing boat the difference is not including the boat itself and it's the actual mass that you've weighed out on the scale. One of the properties with sodium hydroxide is that it's hydroscopic and deliquescent so that as soon as you open up the container it will start uh, absorbing moisture from the air. Yep. So taking a look at the sodium hydroxide pellets here you can see that they're slightly shiny that is because they are absorbing the moisture from the air. So that this procedure needs to be done quite quick. So we are weighing out 40 grams. So that's a fair amount there. Put it back in here and we'll see how much it weighs. Oh. Oh, so that is 40.4, so it's slightly above. So we'll just take some out. There you go. Perfect. So you can see that's 40, just, just slightly over 40. But as you can see, the number is starting to increase because this is now absorbing moisture from the air. So we'll take this away and we will make the solution. So we have our flask here and we're just adding some distilled water to it. Okay. So you can see here that we've just fallen slightly short of the marking. Because if we go above this, then we don't know the exact concentration in here. So we're just adding the sodium hydroxide pellets. Make sure we got them all. So we've added 40 grams of sodium hydroxide to this, and then we'll make it up to the mark with the rest of it being distilled water. So as you see here, it's uh, the sodium hydroxide pellets have started to dissolve. How do we know once it's all dissolved? Is once the solution goes homogeneous, and it'll actually become like a clear solution. This funnel here, because as if the funnel's still kept there, it might still drip into it, but we want to try and be as accurate as possible. So we're just filling up a wee pipette here with more distilled water and then adding it to the flask. There we go, so we made it up to the mark. Okay. The solution is now made up to one liter, and this in here is 19 liters. So when we add this one solution of sodium hydroxide to this, it'll be 20 liters in total. Okay, so now that we've put the sodium hydroxide into here, the solution, this is now 20 liters total. But before we discard this, we need to make sure we run it through with the solution as there may still be residue inside the actual flask itself. The solution has been added at the top, but to make sure it's a consistent concentration all the way through, we need to circulate the fluid a few more times. Ethyl acetate. This one here is 99.97 pure. Here I'm adding 950 mils of just distilled water and it's slightly warm to about 40 degrees. This will help with the dissolving of ethyl acetate. Perfect. Here we have ethyl acetate. This is from the supplier. 
and we're going to add it to a small beaker just so that it doesn't contaminate all the rest of the uh, solution. Well, this is called a ball pipette and we have the bulb at the top here. We just get rid of the air and then we will use the S to extract the liquid. As you can see, it's starting to fill. Perfect, and then we need to do it once more. And as you can see, we're going for this blue mark here. Hopefully you can see it roughly in the light. And that way we know that we have exactly, within certainty, uh, 50 mils. And you wanna try and aim so the bottom of the meniscus is on that line. As you can see here, there's two layers there. The ethyl acetate is slightly immiscible with the distilled water. But if we heat it up and with a stirrer, it should dissolve. See there, the two immiscible liquids. But as it starts to heat, it will start to dissolve. There we go, so we made it up to the mark. Here we have the tubular reactor. We'll go through the equipment and the software that comes along with it. So here we have two tanks. We have the sodium hydroxide tank and we have the ethyl acetate tank. And if you follow the tubes, they will flow down to two pumps, which are labeled sodium hydroxide and ethyl acetate. As you can see here closely, choose the speeds and it ranges from zero to 10. These pumps have calibration charts in which these numbers corresponding, so there you can see four, will correspond to a flow rate. And if you follow the lines up, it goes into the top of the tubular reactor. And things to note up here is we have the connectivity probe here, just in blue. And this is linked down here, and, in, and it's read onto the software. Over here we have the temperature control unit. Up here will be the dials, and this will tell you the temperature in which you can adjust. And you could heat on and off and cold. Uh, the connectivity here we will ignore as the software is much more accurate with the connectivity probe. So here on the software we have three buttons that are clear. So one, two and three. So here is the tubular reactor and it shows you the setup here. So if then we switch across to view the graph. As you take, uh, as it records results, it will generate plots and then this will display on the graph here. But things that are most important for you guys is actually the table and this is the table of results. So the two key columns here is the temperature of reactor, uh, the measured connectivity, and obviously as the reaction goes on and as the temperature varies, you will need to continu continuously adjust the temperature, which is done so here. So at the moment it says 25 degrees, which may not be the exact temperature. So you have to read on that control unit just here. And this temperature displayed here, you will need to manually input here. So for instance, if it's 22 degrees, 22.0, and then hit enter, and that's it logged. And it will continuously log until you end the reaction. Ethyl acetate and sodium hydroxide, and they come with their labeled sodium hydroxide and ethyl acetate measuring cylinders. These you want to make sure you don't mix up, because obviously if you mix them up, you're starting the reaction within the measuring cylinder, and it will spoil the results. So all you need to do is just fill up from the tap here, and with this full of sodium hydroxide, there are two labelled here, tanks, sodium hydroxide, ethyl acetate. How do you fill them up? You just gently lift this up and slide it to a cross, leaving a gap, and you simply pour in with trying to minimise any splashing or agitation to the solution. So if you can try and get it against the wall, it will glide down into the uh, bottom. And you want to make sure that as the tanks deplete, as the reaction goes on, that the solution does not fall below the actual T piece here. In other words, you're gonna be taking in air and not actually solution. So as long as that's fully submerged continuously, you should be good to go. This is the continuously stirred reactor, CSTR. It's very, very similar layout to the other tubular reactor. The only difference is obviously the reactor right in the center here. Again, on the left-hand side, you still have your two tanks. On the right-hand side, you've got your temperature control unit. But in the, in the middle here, this is the important CSTR. 
So if you take a look closely, hopefully you can see that blade in the middle and around it is the heating coil, which is passed through with water. And this is used to heat the solution. If you take a look at the top here, again, similar with the tubular reactor, you've got your connectivity probe. And then on the left-hand side here, this is the temperature probe, which is connected to the temperature unit. So in here, you'll see the stirrer itself, and this will be continuously set at the initial speed that you choose, and it'll be set at that speed throughout the entire experiment. So for both the reactors, you wanna make sure that you operate these pumps at a slow flow rate. This allows time for the heat to transfer and the solution to go to your desired temperature. So as you choose the temperatures, you will go up in temperature increments from around 25 degrees up to a maximum of 37 degrees so that you don't overshoot by up to 40 degrees. Again, similar to the tubular reactor, it's uh, the exact same software. Your three important buttons are just up here. And here, this is where you adjust the temperature. So based on the temperature control unit across here, this here will display the temperature of the solution. And as this changes, even if it goes up by 0.1 degrees, you continuously type in so again, similarly, if it was 22 degrees, 22.0, and hit enter, and that's it logged. Here, this is the temperature control unit. They're both on the same uh, reactors, and you can adjust the temperature here. You will choose a set point temperature, which will be of set increments of your choice. And once you lock it in, it will begin to heat, and it will display the current temperature there, and that current temperature, you want to make sure you log continuously. Once you're ready to begin the experiment, you click go, and that's you all set. Solo quedan horas para que acabe la fiesta.